So there's always a bright side. Let's join the draft. Grimgaunt Predator. That guy is pretty good. I'm definitely happy to take him. Um, you can do some weird stuff with him. We can grab like Bitter Frost Totem. Bitter Frost Totem might also just be the best card. I mean, none of the other cards are particularly exciting. And this is a minus six, minus six. So yeah, let's grab Bitter Frost Totem and uh, let's go off with our Grimgaunt Predator here. Abyssal Mole is pretty good if we can get some Abomination things going. So let's grab some A-bombs. We can grab an A-bomb here or we can just grab, grab Go Grove Huntress. Grab Grove Huntress. That's a tricky one. Uh, but yeah, let's grab Grove Huntress and uh, that's fine. Phytobomb, there's actually a surprising amount of synergy with. It's also just a sweet card. It can, uh, you know, prevent you from dying for a turn. But it's good with Grimgaunt Predator. Um, and that's kind of the theme of the deck. Also, if we pick up anything like Roar or Epidemic, which are obviously good cards, um, that becomes a sweet play with Phytobomb. Uh, Phytobomb automatically triggers your formation for Scourge Knights. So we'll take Scourge Knights here. Maybe that's the draft, is like every card has to have synergy with the previous card that we took. Uh, except Abyssal Maul didn't work, because we didn't pick an Abomination before it. Um, or after it. So I'll grab Scourge Knights. I think Aether Wolves are good. Steg is good. Graveborn Glutton is good. And Glowhype Siren isn't bad either. Wait, Legion Titan. Legion Titan becomes a 9-9 with the Phytobomb. Or it becomes a... Uh, nine eight because it takes one from the plants that's pretty sweet but i'm gonna grab the abomination make sure our our uh, abyssal mall turns on here so that works with phytobomb but i'm just gonna take a swamp moss lurker here the point is just everything works with phytobomb that's all i want you guys to know the card is sweet it's gonna make some sweet things happen I'm going to take the Zithian Hulk over the Sorrow Harvester. It's just got slightly better stats. Um, does it actually? It's got one more toughness at every level. Is that really worth not potentially drawing a card every once in a while? I don't know. Drawing a card every once in a while seems sweet to me. Um, yeah, I like the idea of drawing a card. Let's do that. And here we can negate mobility, which doesn't go along with Grimgaunt Predator, but... Other than that, we're not likely to have that much mobility in our deck, but I think Bright Tusk works fine. We really want a Spring Dryad, I think, this draft. Um, without having the Spring Dryad, I don't know if we pick up the Aether Wolves or not. I think I just grab Grove Huntress because it's uh, just a solid card. And I'll take Glutton over Shimmerfang here. We definitely want more A-bombs, and it's a good win condition too. These cards are all good. I think I'm actually just going to take Dirg Banshee. Uh, it seems a little bit weird because both of these seem to work so much better with Phytobomb, which is, you know, the main thing that we are, uh, that I've been talking about with every other pick. I think Dirg Banshee is a really good card, though, and I'm not sure if everybody realizes how good it is, but it's essentially a 4 8, and then it's essentially an 8 14. And then it's a 1422. Those are all really good numbers. You have to block with it, but you also get to block with it. Let's take another Graveborn Glutton. Those are good in bigger numbers. They um they get to uh pile on uh the damages so that they actually add up to a relevant number. Uh, I'll take Ghost Scale here. I think I want to grab the Abomination. When in doubt, I only have one Abomination Matters card. Um, 
What else? I guess I only have two good, like, underdrops with Swamp Moss Lurker and Ghost Scale Cobra. So that, like, a Dendrify could be reasonable. But I think we can make Zithian Hulk work. And could take a second Bitter Frost Totem. I don't hate it. I don't love it. <clears throat> it's not really a good card. What else? How many ways do I have to trigger Corpse Crawler? I guess Abyssal Maw is fine. Phytobomb and Scourge Knights are fine. The 1-1. One, one. Yeah, a whole bunch of cards I don't really want to play. Let's grab you, Pterodon Molar. Let's grab a Dire Hound. Good underdrop and solid card. I'm going to grab Swamp Moss over the Abomination, I think, here. Um, yeah, I would just rather have Swamp Moss in my deck. And I am going to grab an Abomination over Fangwood Bear because we've picked up so many A-bombs throughout this draft. I've got uh, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I guess, yeah, seven. Um, that we will probably get the trigger off of this, which will make that a pretty good card. Spite Hydra is still not bad, even without the trigger from it. So without the trigger, it's a 5-5 five, five that's going to grow sometimes, uh, if it can ever eat something. Uh, it's kind of like another Grimgaunt in that respect. And with things like Abyssal Maw, um, that does kind of work with the Spite Hydra as well. So I think that that's slightly better than Dirk Banshee, but this is actually pretty close. I will take the Heroic, though. It's just a little bit sweeter, if nothing else. And I'll grab another Abomination. That's fine. Wirewood Ranger is a favorite. And then I've got the choice of Wirewood Ranger or Abyssal Maw. I think Abyssal Maw gets better the more that you have. Because just being able to continually slam them down, play Abyssal Maul every single, every single turn, they're like spirit wanderers in that way. So I think I want Abyssal Maul. And let's just, let's just do it up. Speaking of spirit wanderers, let's take Grove Matriarch. Uh, I have the option for Torrent Soldier, which I think I underrated it first. I think that card is pretty good. I also have Fangwood Bear, um, which is a pretty solid card. I like Stegadon. I like Tangle Sprout as an underdrop. I think Witherfrost Banshee is even okay. But let's take Tor Torrent Soldier. I have definitely come around to like that card. Is this when they gain life? Yes. So we have an Abomination, or we have a Phytobomb. This deck is the bomb, for sure. Some of those bombs are A-bombs, and some of those bombs are Phyto-bombs. At this point, I think there is more value in Abominations. Because we only have two real cards that go with this Grimgaunt Predator and Spite Hydra and both of those are already good if we had a Spring Dryad I would take this and we might still draw a Spring Dryad which I think I would still take but I think because we don't have one yet I just want to grab a Frankenbaum and a Frankenbaum and a Frankenbaum and be happy with uh, th that. <laughs> All right, I can't pretend that wasn't ridiculous. I was going to just try to play it cool. But um, yeah, that was pretty silly to be able to get three Dr. Franken bombs in a row right there. Um, and I think we actually might want like Glow Stride Stag um, just to uh, gain life while we're dealing them damage and uh, kind of tempo them out at the end game here. So we've got, we've got a bomb to drop on our opponents, a Dr. Franken bomb. 
and uh, some Frankenbaum, some Graveborn Gluttons. We're going to go heavy on the Abomination theme. And uh, we will get to see how that works out. I mean, we're like almost playing a constructed deck with just how many Abominations we're actually playing. So we're just going to play every Graveborn Glutton we see, every Zithian Hulk we see because we want to get the Abyssal Triggers. Um, <clears throat> not sure about the Dire Hound, but all the other cards don't really level that well. This card is fine on level 2. On level 3, it scales off kind of significantly. Um, we may still want it. We'll see what my opponent plays on board. I'm probably just going to play the best play for the board. Um, and maybe that's just Zithian Direhound, especially if they block here with, like, I don't know, a creature with four toughness. And then I just get to get in six damage. Um, there's a chance that later in the game... Zithian Direhound would provide more utility for us, but that's good enough right there. Alrighty, and my opponent is Ropen. So, obviously, they are so intimidated by the Graveborn Glutton that they don't know what to do. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, 13 Abominations in my deck. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good number of Abominations to have. Yeah, I, um, it's hard to really talk about what else we want to play without really seeing our opponent's plays here. Um, we can discuss a lot of different random hypotheticals that probably won't come up, but for now... We are just waiting on our opponent. Um, it is round one in the draft, so we could be playing against somebody that doesn't really care that much. Um, that, like, didn't actually show up to the draft. Um, or, I mean, it could be somebody that doesn't care that much and then saw the Graveborn Glutton and actually was just like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not playing against Graveborn Glutton again. <clears throat> because this card, this card can be annoying to play against. Um, sometimes you like, stabilize the board, and you're like, alright, I finally got it. I've dealt with the Graveborn Glutton. Only to find out that uh, your life total is not high enough, and you die. Uh, looks like this is going to be a um, uh, a timeout here. Alright, well this is very exciting content. We can even hear the, uh, just the wind blowing in the background. Um, I'm going to go grab some water while my opponent times out here, and I will be right back.
Alrighty, and it looks like we won. That was a tough one. <clears throat> but we did it. Hmm. Might have to restart Soul Forge here. Looks like it is lagging out on me, so hold your ears. And let's jump in the game. Dark Turkey. Always great born glutton. That's the rule. I think I'm pretty likely to go Frankenbaum Wirewood Ranger here. Do I want to knock that guy out while I can? Um, nah. I guess I'll go Frankenbaum center lane with Wirewood Ranger in the side. So that if my opponent plays a Nexus Technician, I can uh, do the pump there. So I think the order of cards that we want to level is Graveborn Glutton. No, I think we just want to play all Abyssal Mauls first. Because we're going to hit. We're going to hit on the Abyssal Mauls. Um, but what we get to do here actually is... I could also level Torrent Soldier. I could level Torrent Soldier, but the thing is I've got good... I, well, I want to play Abyssal Maul, right? So I guess I could play Torrent Soldier here. I think I just want to keep the Dr. Frankenbombs going. Uh, especially because I can make a bunch of stuff happen right now. So I'm pretty sure this is the play. I shrink here, and then I pump this guy. So both of my guys survive. I hit them for five. I get them with two uh, Frankenbomb triggers. Oh, I do need to be paying attention to formation. Uh, though I think I'm going to play Graveborn Gluttons before I play Scourge Knights. This is just an aggro draft. Uh, I changed my mind. Scourge Knights it is. If I can uh, kill something so clean like that. So get them for two triggers. Let's go Graveborn Glutton. I could go Fighter Bomb. But we'll go Graveborn Glutton into Scourge Knights. Shrinking Nexus Overwatch. And my opponent is at 89. This is the lowest I've ever had an opponent, I think, while streaming. <laughs> I'm sure I've uh, I've had some games that I've like won on 1.4 or whatever in draft. But uh, yeah, this is definitely up there. So that's going to trade off, so I'm going to lose my guy here. I think I will Zithian Direhound, though, and I'm just going to kill the Bright Tusk Sower. I could kill both of these Technosmiths with my Direhound, um, but I'd rather just uh, keep the aggressive creatures on board. And then I'll play that Wirewood Ranger. Let's get some A-bombs. All right. Uh, the fact that this guy isn't sticking around means that we likely... We'll only get one Abyssal Maw trigger, but we'll play Sorrow Harvester along with it, and it'll be fine. It's a minus five, minus five, so it'll deal with this pretty nicely. And we do also have the plus two, plus two to consider. 
Um, so another option is to use that minus six, minus six to get in 10 damage. But I think I'm already over that. Um, let's go... Like this. There's a few different plays that can be made there, I think. But I think this play is reasonable. Which are some Graveborn Gluttons and some Abyssal Mauls. Uh, and I'm sure some of my creatures are going to be dying off. So I might be able to draw cards to see if I get something slightly better. Uh, I don't know exactly what that would be. Oh, okay, but it allows him not to have to uh, replace there. And then I have the option of if I want to go center lane or not. Oh, but my guys aren't dying. So that's interesting. Um, I think I'll go Glutton and I shrink his Nexus Overwatch. I think that's better than pushing in the damage. We get him for 12. So he's at 64, and we only have to deal another half of his life total. Still have a lot of level 2s in the deck. We only drew half of our level 2s, looks like. Uh, yeah, we drew 3 out of 7. It's not horrible, I guess. But, I mean, we're definitely winning. Not winning the whole game, but winning with the current board state. So this is pretty reasonable. I will level a Torrent Soldier here. Uh, and then I'll level a Swamp Moss Lurker. As it's just the most offensive damage. We hit him for 15 down to 55 now. So now we actually have him down to below half of his life total. And I drew Torrent Soldier and Graveborn Glutton. Those are both solid cards. Three poison off the free level two spore, so that'll finish off the Techno Smith. Or no, it'll probably just finish off the Techno Smith. Oh, or it'll finish off this Techno Smith instead. Yeah, we'll finish off this one, and then we'll positive battle over here. Uh, meanwhile, we hit him for eight down to forty-five. And we're going to dodge the center lane by putting our guy in four. So we put our guy down to 45. We have double his life total. And we've got some abominations in play. So we're going to get to give something minus nine, minus nine. I could go for an additional three damage on him. Or I could play a Wirewood Ranger. I think that is probably uh, going to be more beneficial for us. <clears throat> Opponent goes with a trade. That's why I love Swamp Moss Lurker as a proactive one-drop. It winds up trading with so much stuff anyways. My opponent gets a pretty good play there, though. Roaming War Claw to trade off with the two guys. Now, this is going to deal 2 to 8. So, let's say this deals 5 damage. Our opponent is at 40. Um, oh, I forgot. We have a minus 9, minus 9. So, our guy's not going to die. So, let's do like this. Get you for 11. Play Wirewood Ranger. We still have an Abomination on the battlefield. Uh, I could have just gone double Abyssal Maul there, too. That would put my opponent down to uh, 26. I don't hate that play, but I think this winds up working out pretty well for us. not sure if my stream is live right now. Um, oh, it looks like I am from the chat. Um, okay, I just refreshed my stream there. And I'm good. So I get to hit my opponent for 15 here. Um... I can play Sorrow Harvester here, and that's kind of free. 
and I would get to draw a card. Um, what's tricky about that play is, I guess, um, because of this plus three, plus three that I have, the Bright Tusk Sower could also trade here. But I could still play the Bright Tusk Sower. So let's play the Sorrow Harvester, see if I draw anything better. I think that's the best play. Um, I can also pump here now and then Bright Tusk the 1-1 one, one post-combat. Alright, I drew a Grove Huntress. So now we can go like this. And it just lets me get a free 6-6. Six, six. Alright, the Franken Bombs are in. If we can trade these off, we get a sweet 10 damage to our opponent. 5 per. Which is probably only going to translate into one Graveborn Glutton trigger of Graveborn Glutton 3. Um, maybe two of level one, or potentially even just one level two trigger. So, looks like we're good. Our opponent does have a stag in their own deck as well, a uh, glow stride stag. So, they could be gaining some life here. Um, I forget we're allowed to check and see what our opponent's level now with the Techno Smith. That was a new thing that I just learned. So first they leveled Shard Plate Delver. We never saw it. Then they leveled a Scrap Forge Titan. Uh-oh. Uh, but we never saw it. Uh, then they leveled another Scrap Forge Titan. A Grove Huntress. So they actually leveled pretty solid cards. They leveled a War Tusk. That's good. Everything that they've leveled has been really good. Uh, Pummel Pack. That card has beaten me before. Then they level a War Claw on rank 2. They level a Forge Guardian Beta. We saw that. They play the Glow Stride Stag, I think, there. They level the War Tusk, so they do have a level 3 War Tusk in the deck. Um, they level the War Tusk again, or maybe I just scrolled up. They leveled Did they level anything here? No, that was the turn they played the War Claw. Um, they level Bright Tusk, they level Ordinance Captain, and that brings us to our Current turn where they level Scrap Forge Titan 2. I didn't realize the clock was waiting on me. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go for damage. My opponent has some Scrap Forge Titans in the deck. So this will hit him for 5, and then potentially played that wrong, that I could have just positive blocked. But Graveborn Glutton should be enough to seal the deal, bearing any Glowstride Stag <coughs> shenanigans. Yeah, I could see my opponent's clock was running, so I just figured I would continue to look at cards that they leveled. Um, and then I scrolled down to the end of it, and I'm like, wait, they, did, they didn't make this play yet, but turns out they did. Uh, there's a car alarm going off. I am just going to go make sure that's not mine. I'll be right back.
it was not mine, we're good. We're safe. Uh, Graveborn Glutton can positive battle here. It gets turned around by a uh, any kind of pump effect, but it also might just be lethal, too. So I'm not going to care about it too much. Uh, four to eight, so that averages out to, or sorry, four to twelve, so that averages out to eight. So we are exactly 50-50 to just win the game with this here. And, uh, yeah, so he goes for the pump. He had that. This guy actually survives, uh, though it'll die to Scourge Knights. Uh, maybe not. Maybe that has to die to Scourge Knights. Um, at which point we are just hanging on, but we get the 50-50. Uh, we might have actually been in some shit if we had not rolled the 50-50. But we did. So, we good. And by bidding some shit, I mean had to draw one more A-bomb. Let's fire off the next draft round here. Take a look at the deck again for those of you just joining us. We got uh, started with Grimgaunt Predator, which is pretty solid. I... Picked up an Abyssal Maul and then just grabbed every one, mostly, that I saw. Uh, Graveborn Gluttons, Sorrow Harvesters, Zithian Hulk, and um, grabbed three Dr. Frankenbombs in the last four picks of the draft. Uh, that was pretty funny if you weren't watching uh, when that happened. Um, I will have that VOD up on my YouTube channel tonight. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, <laughs> checking that out. It was pretty funny. I decided not to go with the Abyssal Mall. I think I got a little bit punished here because now I'm not going to want to play the Abyssal Mall again. And if you just play it, then... The next one's so much better. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I want to do a shameless plug real quick. If you uh, go down to the, um, the panels section of my Twitch page. Um, oh shit, Hungering Strike. That's pretty good. Um, you'll see a little part on... Um, links you to my YouTube channel. Um... If you follow that, as well as following the stream, uh, both of those things help me out. It, uh, if you're enjoying the content, it will help other people find the content and be able to enjoy it as well. I should not have put Grimgaunt Predator all the way over there. I was too busy plugging my, plugging my shit. But, uh, yeah, Grimgaunt Predator probably should have gone in three so that it had some solid spaces to maneuver to. But no matter. All right, Blightwalker. Here's my favorite thing to do against a Blightwalker, round one. Um, and it, it kind of worked out well because he blocked a mobility creature with it. But I just move. I'm just gonna move out of the way and I'm just gonna la la la, can't hear you. And uh, we just ignore it. Because that trigger will only happen on level one creatures so we're good it's just gonna hit us for a few damage and then we'll draw a level two creature in two or three turns now dark turkey great game um yeah i uh needed that 50 50 at the end there um i mean obviously i had more abominations in my deck but uh, it, was, it wasn't until, like, almost the last turn that, um, oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I, I didn't check until the very last turn um, to see what you'd leveled. And I went through and I was like, oh, shit, this guy's got a bunch of Scrap Forge Titans and Asperian War Tusks in his deck. Um, so I was like, I hope I, like, win right now because... Um, yes, yeah, you needed the glow stride. 
uh, for the A-bomb damage as well. I saw you leveled that guy too. Uh, yeah, pretty fun game. Um, so I could play a Dr. Frank. I want to play Scourge Knights to change this trade into a positive battle for me. And I can just play Dr. Frankenbomb. But this is such a good target for Spite Hydra. And this is going to be such a gar good target for Spite Hydra too. It's also going to be a good target for... Um, uh, Grimgaunt Predator. So that's another reason to just actually leave this Blightwalker around forever. Um, I think I like this. It gives us a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, nah, maybe that's wrong. Maybe we just want to play all the Abominations we can. Yeah, pretty much just a race for you to draw Scrappy. I mean, you had other big bombs too, but... You had to draw Scrappy or something else just a little bit earlier. So we have the Grove Matriarch here. I think I'm just going to let that Blightwalker do its thing. All it's going to do is eventually give me a better Grimgaunt Predator. Or eventually be sacrificed <laughs> to Grave Pact me. Okay, that too. Uh, Alright, so we will glutton up here and I'm just trying to think about potential Scourge Knight plays. Uh, the only other thing I'm thinking is where Grimgaunt Predator wants to go. Let's do like this. Cool, thank you very much Dark Turkey. I appreciate the feedback. Um, got level 3 beta on 4.1 gotcha yeah the um and the huntress I knew when I played my graveborn glutton I was playing it into a potential grove huntress to make that into a positive battle for you but um I still was rolling 50-50 on, on the trigger there so uh that seemed like it was a fine thing to play into uh, do we just play a bunch of Franken bombs here, or do we play Graveborn Glutton? This Graveborn Glutton is going to deal one to four damage. This guy's going to deal two, so I guess it's I guess it just averages it out. Uh, but this will probably deal more damage over time because it's going to count this guy, and it might count this guy as well. Um. So, yeah, you got to see the, uh, the, the other side of the table from this deck, Dark Turkey. But this deck has got a lot of abominations in it. I've got three Graveborn Gluttons, three Dr. Frankenbombs, three Abyssal Maul. So, it is kind of an all-in abomination theme. Uh, I will definitely let you know, though, uh, if I uh, want to try to do something together in the future. That could be a lot of fun. That is a pretty good block for Blightwalker, um, from my perspective, uh, getting to trade there. Though, let's look. What do we want to keep around? Because we've got... I mean, I could even level Bitterfrost Totem. There's probably no need to, though. Um, I guess we want to play a Swamp Moss Lurker on the offensive, and then just trade off my Abyssal Maw... So Abyssal Maul, this is kind of tricky. Abyssal Maul can either trade here. Uh, good game, again, Dark Turkey. Um, Abyssal Maul can either trade here and kill the Blightwalker, pushing in three points of damage and triggering this Dr. Frankenbaum. Or Abyssal Maul can just kill the Southhide Stegadon and stick around and be an abomination that exists on the battlefield. Because if we draw Abyssal Maul next turn, then we're going to potentially want an abomination on the battlefield. Let's go for damage. Let's just make the best damaging play. This hits him for 11 I think. Maybe I did that math wrong. But, yeah, this hits him for a little bit more here. Eight, 
And that will die, hopefully, to the Scourge Knights. Um, yeah. Oops, let's play these in the right order. We will just, we'll just take care of Harbinger of Spring. I mean, realistically, even if my opponent plays like Aether Hounds next turn, it's still going to die to Scourge Knights. But I would rather have an 8-8 and my opponent have a 6-3 than, uh, than not having that, which is effectively what the other option would be. That's also a perfect opportunity for Grimgaunt Predator to uh, have a little snack there. And my Swamp Moss Lurker is putting in some work there. It gets to trade. This is also going to be a trade, which is a little less fortunate, but still perfectly acceptable. We hit our opponent for 8 down to 51. Play another Graveborn Glutton, and we go in it. So my opponent is now, or I guess they were down to the halfway point when they were at 59. Um, so down to half of their life points. Pretty good. And that's enough for our opponent to throw in the towel there. I never noticed that before. You hear that little noise? Not sure if you guys can even hear it. I've got the uh, in-game sounds turned down way down low. Well, I guess by making that noise, I may have caused the client to crash. So I will reload the client real quick. We'll cover yours. I'll mute. Oh, that part was loud, too. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just know I hate that noise myself. Alright, but we are jumping back in the draft here. Currently 3-0. Pretty easy 3-0 so far. Turkey gave us a little bit of a run for our money, but we were definitely in a good position that whole game. Um, but yeah, other than that, we've... Uh, just been making people lose their life total and lose their minds, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I don't wish any ill will on any of my opponents, but I do want to crush them into oblivion. And I think that's a that's a fair that's a fair balance, a fair line to be on, right? You want to be somewhere between uh, very respectful, very courteous, and BMing the fuck out of them. Making them want to quit Soul Forge and never play again, um, and it's all about all about finding that balance, baby. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't usually BM. I think the only time I BM is when my opponents like run the clock out or anything like that. Um, there used to be a don't even know what to call it, a, a scum maneuver um, that me and my friends used to refer to as time scumming. Um, so there's people that when they leave the game, they, uh, ooh, the abomination mirror. And this guy, this guy has the right idea. You just want to play your abominations to, uh, you just want to play your abyssal mall to get your abyssal malls online. So that makes sense. Um, but we got a lot of abominations here, too. So, if you're going to lose a game, you can concede. You can press the battle button, let your opponent take their turn. That's effectively conceding. Um, and it means you don't have to click this side of the screen. You can just keep your hand here. You might be able to still spacebar it. I'm not sure. I think they removed that feature. Um... Or you can let the clock run out. And that's not great. I don't encourage it. It wastes your opponent's time. But it also... Um, 
it also means that you, like, you can just quit the app or something like that. So I understand it. I don't, I don't fully appreciate it, but I get why people do it. Um, you're like, all right, I'm losing. I don't even want to look at Soulforge anymore. You quit the app. Uh, sometimes it also happens by accident. I used to draft a lot um, on my cell phone, just in bed, and then I would like answer a text message. I'd forget I play, was playing Soul Forge, and I'd just fall asleep. Obviously, stuff like that happens. Um, I'm not really going to fault anybody for um, for doing something like that. Let's go here. And here. But the thing that is bad, that people used to do a lot more of, is, and this was back when timers were 20 minutes long, um, there was no rope in the game. The rope is like, I don't want to say new, but I think it came with the new clients. Um, it used to just be, you had 20 minutes to make all of your decisions. Your clock started counting down the second you started taking your turn. And um, oh, here's I'm going to stop talking for a second because this turn's kind of interesting. I definitely want to play Abyssal Mall and just keep that shit running. Um, Abyssal Mall here, shrinking this, seems really good. Uh, and then it's just a matter of do I want to play Graveborn Glutton... Level Torrent Soldier. I could play Scourge Knights as well. Um, I kind of want to play Torrent Soldier. I don't know if that's crazy if I should just be pay playing Graveborn Gluttons. But putting a free spell in the deck seems like it might provide us uh, some interesting plays later down the line. So I'm going to go for that. Gives us a 7-2, which is pretty strong. Um... So, uh, it was 20 minute timers, and what people would do is when they were losing, they would stop playing. And, obviously that's a pretty big problem. The 3 minutes and 45 seconds that you have to wait isn't that big of a deal, and actually just feels like a walk in the park compared to the, uh, oh that's a pretty good play compared to the 20 minutes that you used to have to wait before. But that wasn't the worst part of it. The worst part of it wasn't that people used to make you wait 20 minutes. What they would do is they would run the clock for 19 minutes because you don't really need your clock that much and so forth. You could, you could get a game done and still have, because you're thinking about your plays during your opponent's turn and stuff, um... You could get a game done and still have 18, 19 minutes on your clock. So they would run their clock, uh, sometimes down to even like 30 seconds, and then they'd rejoin the game, and they'd hope that whatever their opponent was doing in those 20 minutes, they still had to take care of. Um, so they would run the clock for 20 minutes, and then, or I'm sorry, for 19 minutes, and then come back and try to win the game at the last second. Um, so that was uh, what we referred to as time scumming. And that was pretty lame behavior, I think. I am going to block here now, though. Uh, we're both playing Abomination, so let's not take too much damage. But also, uh, I've drawn enough. Like, we're, we're deep into the player level. I'm thinking I'm probably going to hit level 2's next turn at this point. Um... And it's not worth the 10 damage. But, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's the behavior that I didn't appreciate. It's not bad. Yeah, they trade off boards with us. We get to Torrent Soldier and finish this off. If you make your deck a little bit bigger, uh, it doesn't matter when it's, uh, for the benefit of shuffling free cards in your deck. Uh, I didn't want to just take this damage though because like I said, 
uh, they are playing abominations as well. And I think we're playing more damage dealing abominations, but yeah, they're still playing A-bombs nonetheless. Works out fine, I think. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I can Bitter Frost Totem to get in six points. Or I can just play Dr. Frankenbaum to get in four points. Hmm, so what's better? Four points or six on the rank up? This is a minus 10, minus 10 on level two. Oh, huh, it's a really close play. Bitter Frost Totem, the Abyssal Maul, or just open lane a Dr. Frankenbaum. And I want to open lane it because I'm going to spite Hydra here regardless. I'll play Dr. Frankenbaum. That's fine. It's about the same amount of damage, about the same amount of board pressure. Um, it keeps an Abomination on our battlefield, which I guess is slightly better for Abyssal Mauls that we might draw. Grave Pact. That's a good play. And it doesn't really level a Grave Pact because my opponent's already on player level 3. 9 plus 6 is 15. So that will persist at 11. I don't actually have any 11s. Do I have any 9s? Yes. Um, I have one 9. Oh, these are 11s, actually. So I do have two 11s in the deck. So, I could fight Obam. It doesn't get me anywhere. I just wanted to cast fight Obam. I, I, I thought about that for another second, and I was like, wait, that doesn't, that doesn't do shit for me. Um, okay, what if I hit this again with a Grove Hunter? So I would put it down to uh, 11. I'd put it down to 6. I've got 6s in the deck. So... Maybe that's just a little bit more reasonable. Go Frankenbaum, nug my opponent for five down to 68, and then Grove Huntress. And I did draw a six. I drew Graveborn Glutton as well as Torrent Soldier level three, which I believe is a, okay, that's a four. Um, the old Graveborn Glutton, that's fine. And that'll trigger alongside the Dr. Frankenbaum and that'll put us to the, um, ooh, ooh, that shrinking that, um, okay, this turn actually lines up pretty well. The only thing I will not have is an abomination on my next turn for if I draw, draw double abyssal maul. I did not draw that. I drew... Glutton Frankenbomb, which is going to deal 8 plus 4 damage, so that's 12. And we just got to do that 5 more times. Easy. Easy, easy. Just, uh, yeah, just 5 more times drawing these two level 3s. Yeah, that's a good block for my opponent. I guess they didn't have any other abominations to play and level. That goes pretty good along with Grave Pact, which he is going to get on the rank up. Uh, I am going to choose to take that damage, though. We've got Spite Hydra in the deck, and uh, that would line up pretty well against that. There we go. There's our Spite Hydra. So Spite Hydra gets to block that, gain three health. It'll be 17-16, and then it will positive battle the 15-15. So that works out very, very well for us. Our opponent gets a little unlucky here, it looks like, unless they've got another Grave Pact. No, they've gotten a little bit unlucky, unfortunately. Yet fortunately for us. I could actually play the Graveborn Glutton here so that the Graveborn Glutton dies and it deals four more damage to my opponent, but I think we get much more equity by a positive battle on with two level three creatures here. Uh, that'll give us a 21. 
and uh, that'll be good, especially if we can get in that damage by giving one of their creatures minus eight, minus eight, to just push through that 20 damage for free. My opponent thinks they're like, yeah, I guess my opponent can't really be playing to level cards right now. We're already on player level four. All right, my opponent goes for the Death Seeker to not kill the Doctor, which is fine. Ooh, and then they have the Grave Pact. Okay, so that works out well for them. And then they positive battle the Doctor. Uh, they get one more play, which is Abyssal Maul without any Abominations. Abyssal Maul, no A-bomb. 17, 4. These are all... Numbers. There's a lot of potential plays here. We probably want to play Graveborn Glutton. Do we need to play it actively? Not really. Six, five, and four is uh, 15. So we can take this out with Abyssal Maul plus Trigger plus Spore Torrent. But would we, would we rather just kill this? I feel like we kind of would. Um, so that's like... I guess we'd like to keep around the Abyssal Maul, right? In order to keep around Abyssal Maul, that would, revo that would revolve around putting... Or we'd like to keep Graveborn Glutton. We can keep Abyssal Maul easily, though. Uh, looks like we'll just keep Abyssal Maul. It's kind of like a hedge play between the two of them. So I'll play this. Then we will give this minus five, minus five, so that we actually do kill it. And then we'll just give this poison four. So we'll take four or 15 damage, but we get to keep around a six, six abomination, which is important with the doctor. Um, this will hit for an average of eight. Um, but even if we go uh, lowest rank triggers right now. If this hits them for four, um, uh, this is actually going to get in for six. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to get... Uh, you know what? We might just have lethal with Grove Huntress. We hit them down to 15. We hit them down to 11. Yeah, Grove Huntress would have been uh, more than 50-50 shot at lethal it would have been a two and three shot at lethal let's hop in and uh blow up some more abominations we uh got to survive the mirror matchup that round so yeah that was that was pretty solid I should say too for uh, for people that aren't catching this live, if you ever see me in the queue, uh, feel free to stop by the stream and uh, check it out, or give me a shout out on SoulForgeLadder.com. I'm usually hanging out on uh, both of those places, and uh, I don't bite. Can talk some talk some sweet Soul Forge game. Just want more people to play Soul Forge, you know? That's that's ultimately I mean I've got other goals in mind by streaming. Um, speaking of which, follow the stream and follow the YouTubes and uh, all that jazz. But um, yeah, the more people that play Soul Forge Shorter queue times, all that. Um, so, it's good for everybody. Um, here we are faced with the option once again of Abyssal Maul being our only abomination turn one play. Grove Huntress is just a slightly better card. Grove Matriarch is just a slightly better card, so I think we put an Abomination on the battlefield, and uh, 
Yeah, kind of weird. And yeah, clearly we're going to have more non-abyssal mall um, abominations on this next turn. But... And I think... What did we say? I think we want to play Graveborn Gluttons first, then Abyssal Maws, then Dr. Frankenbombs. I'm I'm really curious on this turn. Obviously, Zithian Hulk is, like, getting the lowest nod. But I guess this card... The thing is, this card deals more damage than Graveborn Glutton, but the actual stats are weaker. Um... Having two less attack is a pretty big deal, and having three less attack and one less toughness are also equally big deals. Um, so Frankenbaum would deal six damage, where a Graveborn would only deal four here, but four maximum, probably two. Uh, and you want to play all the Abyssal Mauls that you have, though. That one, that one I'm pretty sure of. Um, though maybe there will be people that uh, think I should have played the two damage dealing cards there. Um, I don't think there is a good example because there was such a good spot for Abyssal Maws. But that's kind of the point, I guess, is that I feel like there's always a good spot for Abyssal Maws. And that's why I think it's worth playing. Uh, I could play the Dire Hound here to push through six damage. I think I will get more equity out of Graveborn Glutton, though. We've got Spite Hydra and Grimgon Predator to deal with that 4-2 that my opponent just played. And, yeah, there's Grimgon Predator. We also have Grove Huntress, uh, which Grove Huntress could just eat off the second half of that while pumping Grimgon Predator, or maybe even pumping that or something if that pumps the forge century yeah okay well now now we definitely want to block uh just grove huntress on this and then we're just going to grow the grim gaunt predator actually grove huntress is going to grow the ranger and then ranger is going to grow the predator and that'll leave us Pushing in one more point of damage and having a slightly bigger ranger while still being able to eat our opponent's Ordnance Captain. It's good to draw one Dr. Frankenbaum. Those triggers do start to matter. And uh, Scourge Knights is good. Alright, they've got that to finish off the Predator. And they've got that to finish off the Ranger. So I could eat their Matrix Warden with... Oh, this is player level 2. I could eat their Matrix Warden with Dr. Frankenbaum. But if I just wait a little bit longer, I might draw Grim Grimgaunt Predator. I can also eat this for free with a uh, Abyssal Maul and not feel bad. Uh, yeah, and I also don't get punished for not blocking because I don't want to just play into Ordnance Captain. So let's just play our two biggest creatures here and here. And that looks good. All right, now we have Abyssal Maw to be able to positive battle the Matrix Warden. Uh, though if we don't have a good trigger for it, now nah, I think we'll have a good trigger for it. Uh, though that's not one. And here's Ordinance Captain in the center lane. There she blows. All right. So that means that Abyssal Maul would be trading with Matrix Warden. Um, and I guess I can just shrink the Ordinance Captain and block it with a Graveborn Glutton. Because they're 9-5 I'll be able to trade with when I draw more level 1s next turn. Meanwhile, I also get in... Uh, what is this? Uh, 14 or 16 points of damage on my opponent. That is not bad either. Uh, didn't draw a level 1, though. That kind of stinks. I don't know if I want to trade my Graveborn Glutton for this. Like, I would much rather trade it for Abyssal Maul, Grove Huntress, or a level 1 creature. Yeah, I'm not sure. If he pumps it, I guess I'm kind of priced into trading with it. 
Oh, right, he's gonna pump that. Durr. Um. Yeah. Let's just play some open lane stuff. And I'm gonna put Grimgaunt Predator here because if I draw Abyssal Maul, I've got a really good play next turn. And I drew it, and I think I get pretty rewarded for this. I get to move over Grimgaunt Predator and then shrink the Siphon Infiltrator um, and just grow my guy to a 13 13. Uh, so that works out really well. And I could play Wirewood Ranger or I could just play another Abyssal Maw to shrink this. Or. Oh, a minus three, minus three. So let's see. If I give this minus five. So, give this minus five, it'll take three, it'll gain four. All right, I think this is the play. There's a lot of different plays here. There's also plays that include just leveling up Wirewood Ranger here, leveling up and getting him into the next player level. But I think this is the play that I was born to make. Whoops. Oh no, I don't have any abominations left. Oh no. Oh no, I messed up, y'all. I messed up. Ooh, okay, that play was a lot, a lot, a lot worse than other potential plays I could have made. Uh, I guess I don't get that punished because I've got a... and I didn't actually play the guy. Um, I don't get that punished because the Abyssal Maw is so good here and here and here. But what's awkward is this Grimgaunt Predator would have actually just been better to have not been played at all. Grove Huntress is also a good play now. Grove Huntress isn't bad. Because if I Abyssal Mole, I actually have to shrink this. Because otherwise this will survive. Uh, whew, don't play that first. All right. Let's just play this. Let's just get back on board. That was a pretty silly play. Um, we'll pump here. Yeah, that was silly. I was born for that. <laughs> yes, I was born for that. That Those were my exact words. Oh, uh, that seemed like that seemed like such a good play. I was like, this this was the play that I was put on this earth to make. That's that's honestly how I felt right there. And uh, turns out it was. I wasn't wrong. That was definitely the play I was put on this earth to make. Um, let's just go like this, and we'll just gain some life. My opponent's like pretty low here. So maybe by just dodging, I can uh, open up Glow Strife. Glow Stride Stag was my biggest attack creature and also gained me life. I, uh, I did seriously consider putting it here. This looks pretty good for me because my opponent can't afford to take 21. Oh, okay, that's pretty good for them. But, oh, they take out that. So they are going to take... 36 damage here when I press the battle button. So that is GG. Whew. Okay, the play I was born for was an epic failure, but we are 5-0, so I'm going to uh, just throw that in the title and let everybody on soulforgeladder.com know that I'm 
just some plugin. Mad Max. Mad Max is no match for our abominations. And we got two abominations in the opening hand. Can't ask for much more than that. Graveborn Glutton, Abyssal Maw. So, that's pretty good. I've never tried to just like, or I can't say never, but um, it's been a while since I've just tried to force a draft archetype like this. So how we want to play around that is like this, so that he can't move over. If we put Graveborn Glutton in any space beside a side lane, um, he just gets to eat our guy. And we might be able to play Grimgaunt Predator and shrink his guy. The play that I was actually born for. Um, <laughs> just on a slightly, slightly lower scale, so I've got a little bit less to be able to mess up here. All right, he goes for the Techno Trade. Um, though he could have also Techno Traded here, so we'll see what else he has. Um, uh, okay, that's fine. That doesn't mean anything. Um, so do we want to Abyssal Maw and save anything else, or do we just want to pump Grimgaunt Predator? I think pumping Grimgaunt Predator is fine, right? Let's do this pre-combat so that we don't lose our abominations and lose our mind and lose the game. All right, we get slightly worse creatures here. We had a lot of good cards in the last hand, I think, right? Yeah, we had Wirewood Ranger, Grove Huntress, and Hulk. We also had Spite Hydra and Grove Matriarch in the first hand. This one kind of falls off a little bit. We've got mostly cards I would consider underdrops. Bitter Frost Totem is, like, by definition, an underdrop. And Zithian Direhound is the next closest thing. Then we have Swamp Moss Lurker. Glowstride Stag, and uh, if a creature minus four, minus four, an enemy creature minus four. I mean, you guys see what I'm thinking, right? It's crazy. But what I'm thinking is I can Bitter Frost Totem my Abomination, move over Grimgaunt Predator, and then... Zithian Direhound, their Technosmith, so that I have a 9-9. They're not going to be able to kill it on their turn. Uh, it's going to be a lot of damage. Fuck it. It's sweet, right? If nothing else. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Last time I tried to do a sweet play, it backfired. I don't really care about leveling any of those cards, so hitting them for nine, and like right now, they're not going to be able to deal with this. They would need, I forget what colors they are. Oh yeah, they're red. Uh, no, they could deal with it if they have the three, six, but right, they have to chump block it, and then either Matrix Warden, or they are planning on chump blocking it again, in which case I'm going to be able to hit them for 11. Uh, they're not going to have a four... They're going to have a four damage burn spell. Nope, I'm going to get to dodge that and level a Torrent Soldier. Or a Dirk Banshee, but I'll level Torrent Soldier. Uh, so yeah, this is perfect. I get in 15 damage here. I think that play worked out pretty well. Torrent Soldier and then... Graveborn Glutton. That was sweet. Grimgaunt Predator is pretty sweet. We'll be able to finish off if they play like a 4-5 right there. Uh, and then I have Abyssal Maul as well. Um, so actually Abyssal Maul can finish off Cinder Colossus and give me a 13-13. That is a pretty good 2.1. Oh, my A-bomb! My A-bomb, no! Oh, I do have an A-bomb. I've got the dog. Woo! Dog doing work. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Good boy. Good boy. Who's a good boy? 
Look at this card. Don't you guys look at this card and just think... Good boy? That's what I think. Um, so yeah, now we're in a real good spot. We can fight Obom to grow our Grimgaunt Predator even more. The Grove Huntress pumping this and finishing off the Technosmith seems pretty strong. And I think we will likely avoid Steam Sentinel. Let's crash in for 14 here. Looks like we're going to be... 6-0 pretty soon. I don't want to start counting my chickens. Um, but I got two pretty strong chickens right here. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Grimgaunt Predator gets to move over, eat this with the Scourge Knights, maybe eat something else with Abyssal Maul. Yeah, this guy, uh, this deck was... I mean, I did first pick Grimgaunt Predator and then kind of draft around him. All right, that's a level 2 Siphon Augmentation, so that's pretty good. I get a little bit punished by putting my creature in the center lane, but that's going to pay off immediately after when I get to eat both of these things for free. Oh, I don't get to eat them both for free because I need... Oh, no, I can get formation. A formation like this. Look at this turn. Look at that. 2613 Grimgaunt Predator. Alright. This game was the game I was born for. Forget about that last one. This one I was born for. Alright, we got there, and it is time for the last round. I am just going to update the title here. And let's hop in the queue. I probably should, with the amount of time that it takes to find a match, I should just hop in the queue immediately. This is going to be our eighth game played as well. Yeah, this will be our eighth game played. So we also get a free event ticket out of it. So that's pretty good. I was running low on event tickets. I just dropped below 600. So I was getting a little scared there. But, looks like we're doing good. Deville. Let's lead with Graveborn Glutton. He's been pretty strong for us. And we got Frankenbombs and Grimgaunt Predators. Nothing too crazy is going to happen here. There are so many people getting packages today. I've seen so many FedEx and UPS cars driving by outside my window. It's like the, like the sixth one I've seen today, I think. Oh, I, uh, one was the mail, I guess. Uh, so that doesn't count at all. That happens almost every day. It also might just be like one FedEx guy and one UPS guy and they're lost and they just keep driving around my neighborhood. That could be the case too. Not sure. Either way... We've got a delivery to make to our opponent. And we're going to mail him a bomb. <laughs> An A-bomb, obviously. But... Um... 
Yeah, somebody that doesn't show up would be... <laughs> Maybe I am in the Truman Show. Oh, yeah, everything's just, just like, circular. You know, that movie, Truman Show, fucked with me so much as a little kid. If, when I have kids... Yeah, maybe this game's also a timeout. Um, when I have kids, they are... I don't like... There's a lot of things to think about when you have children. It's what are you going to tell them about the world and the universe? Um, when are you going to educate them about... I mean, I guess there's a lot going on with genders and things right now, but... but uh, one one thing that I'm concerned with is when does your kid... Oh, wait, there's two. When does your kid get to see Truman Show? And when does your kid get to see The Sixth Sense? Um, and I think both of those are really important topics that you need to be on the same page with your significant other. Because... The Sixth Sense is kind of another thing, but The Truman Show just fucked with me. I thought, I really thought I was on The Truman Show. And that's why, I mean, I went into, I mean, it's not why. I'd always been kind of a, a silly kid and I liked to sing and stuff like that. But um, I did entertainment and theater and went to college for communications and broadcasting and writing and I think part of that stems back to the idea that I thought people were always watching me. Um, <laughs> and, ooh, you know what's kind of neat? Normally stuff gets blocked by Grimgaunt, or stuff blocks Contagion Lord, and Contagion Lord's like, ha, I dealt damage to you. I'm gonna dip out. But if that something is Grimgaunt Predator, like, you dip out, but then you just grew Grimgaunt Predator. So... I mean, you get to choose whether you want it to be a 7-7 seven, seven or a 7-3, um, or you can just trade with it, but then I can move. Um, but yeah, that, that movie just fucked with me. And for a while, I just, I thought I was on The Truman Show. Every once in a while, when I was alone, I would just go, STOP WATCHING ME! <laughs> My show is canceled. Brutal. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I have to think, like, this, right now, like, I mean, it's, this, this would be obviously fun to watch if you enjoy Soul Forge, but Soul Forge isn't enjoyed by, like, the masses yet. Um, there has to be, like, um... Sorry, I'm just looking at the screen and thinking about my turns and plays as well. Um, uh, I don't know if I was exactly making my point, but, um, like, my life hasn't always been that exciting. Like, I feel like there would be more, more weird shit happening in my life if I lived on The Truman Show. But I guess that was kind of the point, too. Like, his life was pretty... Mediocre. People watch fucking Desperate Housewives, too. So I don't know. But that's... Maybe that's not super um, mediocre, either. Um, I think we want to hit them for five. Not, I wasn't thinking about this game at all. I'm just, like, looking for cameras around my room right now. I'm like, all right, where could they be hiding cameras? <sighs> You're not on the Truman Show. You're doing okay, man. Uh, it's just awkward that my opponent has so many positive battles. They've, they've leveled really good cards here. I'm pretty sure I want to play Torrent Soldier or Dr. Frankenbaum. But if I want to play Torrent Soldier, like I could also play Dirk Banshee to just trade off with this. And I think I kind of want to get back in it a little bit, but Dirk Banshee is always going to be a good card. Torrent Soldier is always going to be good. Yeah, these are fine levels. Let's get back in the game a little bit here with these. I could have also traded off 
the Grimgaunt with the Contagion Lord and then just put Torrent uh, Soldier right here. But I think this works out. Um, Abyssal Maul gets to jump in front of this now. Um, I am just realizing that every time a FedEx truck has drove by, my opponent has timed out. So there might be some kind of connection there. Like maybe every time they like put some processes into driving a, a FedEx truck by, um, they can't also have... Um... Oh, this guy's real good, isn't he? It's to... Um, he's not real good. He's good. Oh, fuck. All right. Talking too much about the Truman Show. Wasn't paying attention. All right. I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal. We're about to rank up. We're going to draw Grim, Grim Gaunt Predator. And just play it right there. And the the rest of the field is negligible. We just would have had... Like, all that that would have meant... The, the other play that I would have made... Would have meant that this had slightly less health. But that doesn't actually translate into anything in the actual game. Uh, I'm, we're lucky I actually did draw the Grimgaunt Predator. But, uh, I mean, not that lucky. I called it, right? So, that takes skill. I just didn't want him to be able to activate his thing and feel good about himself, you know? Fuck that. Alright, Torrent Soldier might be able to make something happen. If I like... Oh, Phytobomb actually could be really good here. Phytobomb also means that this guy takes one damage and then three more from the Torrent Soldier while also taking one from a seedling. Yeah, I think Phytobomb works out really well. And then gets minus six, minus six, so it can't Phytobomb! It can't survive a Phytobomb! What do you do with your life if you can't survive a Phytobomb, Grimgaunt Predator? Uh, okay, well I can build it up then. If I Phytobomb and then Torrent Soldier and Torrent Soldier the Phytobomb? But then why am I Phytobombing? I'm Phytobombing so that I have a 7 4. And a 7 4 is actually my best creature. Like a 7 4 is better than Dr. Frankenbaum. Though Dr. Frankenbaum gives me... If I play Dr. Frankenbaum here... Right now this is just 4 damage. Or it's 3 damage. If I play Dr. Frankenbaum it becomes 10. But then I don't have anything for the Torrent Soldier to do. Alright, we're making weird plays this game. Why did we come here if not to make really, really strange plays, right? Seven, a seven, oh no, seven five. Seven five's good, dude. It's gonna trade with a level one creature. <laughs> um, yeah, it's only a trade with a level one creature, but I don't know, it's value. My opponent spent two spells on their last turn to make sure my Grimgaunt Predator wouldn't grow. And then I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm gonna grow my Grimgaunt Predator. So, it's so hard to say. Grim Gaunt Predator. No, the value! My opponent thinks they're getting value here, but actually, I'm getting value. Because that gives me a free target for Dirg Banshee, which means I get to just make an 810. Which an 810 is not that impressive, but I still get to make it. Uh, and then I can Graveborn Glutton, or I could just Dirg Banshee this... And Graveborn Glutton side lane. 
I think I might like that actually a little bit better. Uh, so this will go down to five. Yeah, they'll still trade. Hmm. So do we want Durg Banshee to survive? I think I just want to keep my A-bomb on board. When in doubt, just play for Abyssal Maw. I don't know why that says it's a defender, but it is clearly not. Get rewarded as I draw Abyssal Mom. Bomb. Abyssal. Oh, Abyssal Maw. Oh, maybe that's why I said Abyssal Mom. <laughs> I draw my Abyssal Mommy. This is Mommy and Daddy right here. This is Daddy. And, oh, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Pretend I didn't say anything. Um... <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I can uh, unsee that now. Whoops. All right. Uh, Abyssal Maw can shrink the Nexus Overwatch here. And uh, <laughs> get in an extra eight points of damage, so that's good. Bitter Frost Totem is also leveled up right now, uh, so that can shrink some stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of just want to go for damage push, which would just be just shrink both of those creatures. Um. Though if I grow wide, that's even better, isn't it? I can just play a Wirewood Ranger and then rank up. Yeah, that's just slightly better. Like, 11 damage is good. This is probably also going to provide... Or, it would be 10 damage. And this is probably also going to provide 11 damage. From just being unblocked twice and pumping up that. Torrent Soldier works really well with the grow wide strategy. Uh, my opponent's life total is still really high. That's the only thing that we haven't quite talked about. Uh, I've played two Graveborn Gluttons and one Dr. Frankenbaum to get me here. Does this gain life? Yeah, it does. Okay. So my opponent has got the, uh, the read on me. Oh, my opponent doesn't have any cards for me to Torrent Soldier into. That's kind of lame. Uh, we're going to grow this one. Our opponent does have Epidemic in the deck, but we are just going to grow wide on our creatures here. And I'm not going to play Spore Torrent. That is okay with me. Dirk Banshee plus Dire Hound might be able to finish off a creature. Uh, I get to give something minus 10 attack. Uh, so that is likely to be able to eat something. This gets to eat the Dirk Banshee that we just pumped up, as well as trade with this. So that's pretty good for them. I pretty much get to eat this. Wirewood Ranger gets to save Wirewood Ranger. So that's pretty insane. Dirk Banshee's pretty clearly going to go here. And... I think I go here to continue to grow wide. And then I just play... I guess I play Dire Hound and... Um, I'll put no damage on this, I guess. I'm also kind of just playing Dire Hound to make my deck a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, this seems good. Oh, it's also an abomination. So that helps as well with Dr. Frankenbaum. Our opponent has to trade a level two creature with Wirewood Ranger. And I don't know. They need some more help than that, though. And they have a level three. Okay, so those two will trade. So that's pretty good. My opponent takes 25 here. So, right, this is 11... Yeah, it's 25, so that's 26, that's 27, and that's game. So that was a 
pretty sweet 7-0 draft. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I earned one ticket for going 7-0. That sucks. Uh, but that was our eighth win of the day as well. Um, as well as our seventh win in that draft. So pretty sweet. Um, I am still going to keep streaming, but I am also going to cut this into a YouTube clip um, and throw that up on my YouTube channel uh, so that everybody can take it uh, or so that everybody can watch it there. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you thought. Uh, you can follow me on stream on uh, twitch.tv slash noluxgiven and uh, follow to know when I'm going to be streaming live. And uh, if you are watching the stream, go follow that YouTube. So either way, you should be hitting that follow button on something right now. Um, 